Blessed be the name of the Lord. How's everybody doing tonight? How many are glad to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. And I'm so blessed here tonight for you guys. How many had a good uh, dinner tonight? Wasn't it awesome? Praise God. We are so thankful for you guys. We're thankful for those that are watching. We're thankful for those that are going to hear in the future. And uh, we're excited tonight. Amen. Yes. How do you believe the Lord's going to speak to you as if you're the only person in this room? Yes. Right? Because you can do that, right? Yes. I mean, God will just speak to you. Revelation will come. Impartation will come. I, God can just do something above and beyond. The Word of God said He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. So I don't know about you. Can you think pretty big? Yes. Amen. Can you ask pretty big? Amen. So we're just going to believe tonight. So let's just pray. Father, we just thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for your word. We thank you that all the promises of God are yes and amen. We thank you, Lord Father, for your truth, Lord God, that never fails. We thank you, Father God, for your grace and your goodness, Lord. And Lord, we give you the honor and the praise. This is way too bright. Father, we just thank you for it. God, anybody got some sunglasses tonight? <laughs> and Father, I just thank you for tonight for the Holy Spirit, Lord. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, Amen. 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 Let's put that first light up. Hallelujah. Everybody say, Peace. peace. Everybody say, Be still. Peace. Everybody say, peace. peace. Be still. Be still. Now, last week we started talking about God's peace. And we said that the peace of God. The Bible says that passes all understanding, keeps and guards our heart. Amen. And we said that Jesus is the Prince of Peace, right? He, Jesus said it like this in the book of John. He said, he said, my peace I give unto you, not the peace that the world gives, my peace. And we said that the very same peace that Jesus operated in, walked in, when he faced it, all the challenges that he, he faced on the earth, that same peace, that same calmness is inside of you and me. And there are principles in the word, right, as we're going to see tonight, that we can activate that peace, guard that peace, right? There's things that we can do. Everybody say, things that I can do. Let's just look over here. Let's go to Colossians, the third chapter, verse number 15. And we, we quoted this last week or we shared it, but I just wanted you to see it again. And we are excited for the word. Colossians 3, verse 15, it says, And let the peace of God, everybody say, let the peace of God. Everybody say rule. rule. Everybody say rule. rule. Where? In your, in your hearts, to which you are also called in one body, and be ye what? Thankful. Thankful. Notice the word for rule. I want you to see it here. Slide number 15. He said, let the peace of God rule. Everybody say rule. rule. And, and, and we're, I brought it up in the Amplified. The Amplified says, and we'll read that, but it talks about being the umpire. So whatever decision that we're making, whatever direction that we're going, we should be dictated by peace. Peace should be the, the answer. It means to decide, to determine, to direct. Can we be directed by God's peace? Yes. We saw that in the book of Isaiah. It said, be led forth with peace, right? Let peace govern your heart. Let peace control your heart. Arbitrate, right? And the word for arbitrate means this. It's almost like an independent person or body that reaches an authoritative judgment or settlement. In other words, God's got what's best for us. And God, uh, when he arbitrates, he doesn't have any bias. Amen? And so when he says, let the peace of God, it's, it's, it's a beautiful non um, uh, swayed over here or there. It's the pureness that comes from God. Amen. Look at this uh, slide number 16. This is a couple different translations. I just want you to see it. It says, let the shalom, which is the Greek, a Hebrew word for peace, which comes from the Messiah, be your heart's decision maker. Everybody say heart's decision maker. So that's saying if you're going in a direction and you're making a decision and you have here and here, right? And you're going, okay, uh, uh, there's, there's no peace here, right? Should you go in that direction? No. And, and hypothetically, let me just say this. Say there's only two things that are presented to you. This one over here, I got no peace. And then you go, oh, oh, wait, there's no peace over here. What should you do if there's no peace in either direction? Don't move. How many believe that God can make a way when there is no way? You might be thinking, I don't know what to do. It's either jump into the Red Sea and drown or go back there to the Egyptians, right? And get killed and be a slave again. Right? But how many know God's got a way of making a way, parting the Red Sea? And just be, and this is where we have to wait on the Lord. There's no peace here. There's no peace here. Thank God, God will make a way. Everybody say, led forth with peace. 
Notice what it goes on to say. This is the Good News translation. It says, the peace that give, Christ gives is to guide you in the decisions that you make. For it is this peace that God has called you together in one body and be thankful. Now, Jim, put the Amplified up there. How many are excited about this? Amen. How many have experienced that? Amen. Right? If you're, if you're, you're going to say something, there's no peace, should you say it? No. Right? Everybody say peace. peace. Everybody say thank God, thank God that the very peace of God is an umpire in my heart. Look what it says in the Amplified. It says, let the peace, soul harmony, which comes from Christ, rule, act as an umpire. How often? Continually. Continually in your hearts, deciding and settling with all finality, all questions that arise in your mind in that peaceful state. So again, again, the similar thought there. And it's talking about God's peace being that umpire deciding, deciding, right? The questions that arise in our mind. Everybody say, God's peace. God's peace. Everybody say, thank God for the peace of God. Peace of God. So here's a principle I want to give you. Like last week, we, we shared with you, and it kind of it, um, we talked about how that Martha, right? Remember, do you remember the story of Martha and Mary? Yep. And Jesus came to the house, and Jesus was teaching, and, and Mary was busy serving, cumbered about with much serving. And then she wanted to get her sister there. And she comes to Jesus and says, hey, don't you care that Mary, my sister's left me to serve alone? And then Jesus said to her, he said, uh, he said Martha, Martha, you're careful and troubled about many things, many things. And so and, and he said, but one thing is needful, right? And, and Mary chose it. So if you and I are going to be people of peace, right? Number one, put God first. Everybody say, put God first. I mean, if you're putting God like number three, number two, 14 in your, your heart's desires, you're not going to have a lot of peace, right? Put the Lord first. Everybody say, God first. Look at this. Look at Isaiah 28, verse 16. Here's some other principles that we're going to give you. Isaiah 28, verse 16. It says, he that believeth shall not, everybody say, make haste. Everybody say, he that believeth. He that believeth. Notice the last part of it there. He said he laid a, uh, it talks about Christ here, the Lord laying a Zion for a foundation of stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not, shall not, everybody say, shall not. Shall not. What? Make haste. haste, right? So notice the word for believeth. We want to see that. Slide 17. Because if you and I are going to be people of peace, right, we're going to see the scripture. We, we got to believe. How many believe God is real? Amen. How many believe God can, can give you a peace beyond your understanding? Yes. Yes. How many believe God's word is true? <laughs> Everything else that we say from this point on will mean nothing unless we believe. Amen. I know it sounds simple, but how do you how, how many know that that's true, right? We, we believe. Amen. The word believe means to build up or support, to foster as a parent or nurse, to be firm or faithful. It means to trust or believe to be permanent or quiet. So when it's talking about believing, it's talking about not just a, a shallow kind of belief. It's talking about a belief like a parent, right, a nurse. It's somebody that's sticking to it, right? It's firm and it's faithful. You trust, you believe, and bless God, thank the Lord, it's permanent. Yes. Amen. So how many thank God for that kind of belief? Yes. He says, he that believeth shall not make haste. Notice the word for haste, slide number 18. The word haste means to show or make haste or act quickly, okay? And the word haste basically for just from the dictionary means excessive speed, right? Or urgency of movement or action, uh, hurry. Everybody say rush. rush. How many know God is not in the hurrying Amen. and rush business? Yeah. When you feel like you just got to do it, Right? You're just got to go. Uh, I can't wait another moment. You're, it's not the Lord. God does not drive his people. God leads Amen. his people. Yeah. He, we're led forth with peace. Yeah. If you're like, ah, 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 you, need to, you need to calm down and, and need prayer because it's not the Lord. It's your flesh. He that believeth, we're trusting in the Lord, and we just know because we know we're going to win. Right? We know how this is going to turn out. No matter what you and I are facing, Amen. how many know we going to win? Amen. So you can face every problem with that faith. Faith, Like, Lord, we know we're, gonna, we're like weebles. We may wobble, but we ain't falling down. Amen. 
we're like the ivory soap. We might get plunged down, but we're bobbing back up, right? Remember, remember the ivory soap? You push it down and go back up. Everybody say peace. peace. Now look at this scripture in a couple different translations. I want you to see it. Let's look at it, the Amplified. And we're going to just focus in on the last part of that verse where it says, He that believeth shall not make haste. How many love the word? Amen. So in the last part it says this. He who believes, trusts in, relies on, and adheres to the stone, which is Christ, <laughs> will not be ashamed or give way or haste, excuse me, give way or hasten away, notice the last part, in sudden panic. Now, I don't know about you, a hasten, sudden panic is the opposite of peace. Amen. Are you guys hearing this? Look at that in the New Living Translation. I want you to see it. And everybody say, by the grace of God, grace that, of God. that that peace, that peace. God's, peace God's peace is in me. He says this, whosoever believes needs never run away again. Amen. How many like that? Yes. All right, look at uh, slide number 19. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Slide number 19. It says, this is the God's word translation. Whoever believes in him will not. Glory. Is it that simple? Yes. Didn't Jesus say something like this? Uh, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Yep. Look at the Common English Bible says this. The one who trusts won't tremble. A complete Jewish Bible says this. He who trusts will not rush here and there. Uh, the Holman's Christian Bible says, Standard Bible says this. The one who believes will be what? Unshakable. Unshakable. All right. So if we're going to walk in peace. Number one, we're putting God first. Number two, right? We're going to we're going to believe the word. Yeah. Yeah. We believe God is with us. Amen. Right. We believe he's not only with us, but he's good yeah. and he's faithful. Now, let's look at another principle here I want to share with you tonight. This is a, a good one here. Let's go to Mark, the fourth chapter, verse thirty five. Mark, the fourth chapter, verse thirty five. And just to give you some context of what was happening here, Jesus was preaching the parable of the sower, and he's talking about the kingdom. And all day, he's just ministering the kingdom. All day. Mustard seed, talking about the power of the word. And he's just, all day he's ministering. He's there, and he's preaching, and he's preaching. And so notice what it says there. In the same day when the evening was come, I'm about to say the same day. Amen. He saith unto uh, to the disciples, let us pass over to the other side. Everybody say, Passover, Passover. To, the to the other side. So get the picture. Jesus is on one side of the lake, right? And he's telling his disciples, hey, it's been a long day, but let's pass over, pass over, everybody say, to the other side. To the other side. Notice these words. I know they're simple words, but I want you to see it. Slide number four for the word for Passover and other side. Passover. The word Passover means to go and everybody say, pass through. How many, how many know there are times when God tells us to do some things, we just go, but how many know there are times you and I may need to pass through some things, yep. right? We, go, we might need to go through the fire. We might need to go through the storm, through the water. Some people say, well, Pastor Michael, I'm a Christian. I believe in God. All God's good. I'll never have any problems. Well, no, you are going to have problems. But the difference is with us in the world... We stand on the word and we're doers of the word. And when the storms come and the wind comes and the rain falls, the house is not going to fall. Why? Because we're doers of the word. Yes. Are you guys hearing that? But he says, let's pass over to the other side. Notice the word for other side. It means beyond. Everybody said beyond. beyond. It means other side. It means to pierce through a cross. Doesn't God want all of us to go beyond where we are right now? God wants to take you and I further, farther, deeper than ever before, right? He wants us to go beyond. How many like to go beyond where you are right now? Supernaturally, further, farther, beyond. To the glory of the kingdom, amen? He said, let us, go back to the scripture. He said, let us, notice the phrasing here, let us pass over unto the other side. So get the picture. He's saying to the disciples, me included, you included, we are all going to pass over to the other side. How many like that? Yeah. 
Isn't that what, how God speaks? He calls the end from the beginning. He's basically saying, listen, this is what's going let, to, let us pass over. He didn't say let us try to. He said we're, we're passing over to the other side. So look at verse number 36. And it says this. It says, and when, when they had sent away the multitude, they took him, took Jesus, even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. In verse number 37. And it says, and there arose. Everybody say arose. A great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. Notice this now. So they're starting to go, right? And apparently, again, this is just my observation, that they, when they started out, these were fishermen. They would have told Jesus, Jesus, the water looks pretty rough. We shouldn't cross right now. <laughs> there looks like there's a storm. I think, that, I think it was good sailing weather when they started out. You know, they were like, you know, they didn't, there's no objection to this. There was no objection. But, 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 the, but when they started to go and, and they get, they're starting to get out there, notice the word it says, there arose a great storm of wind. Notice the word for arose. I want you to see it because this is usually how it happens with us, you and me. You take a step of faith. It looks like it's clear sailing. But when you and I are doing the will of God, how many know there are things that you and I can't plan for? There's some things that are unexpected, right? That out of the blue, notice the word for arose, it means to come into existence. It wasn't there before. It began to be. It received being. It's arising. It's out of the blue. It's beginning to be. It's, it's, it's coming into existence. It wasn't there before. When God gives you and I a word, we think we're just going to surf right there, no problems. But no, when you got a word from God, out of the blue, there arose, there arose, it began to be, came into existence. It wasn't there before. Right. Has anybody experienced that before? Yes. You take a step of faith. All of a sudden, it's like, whoa, what happened? <laughs> but notice he said, there arose a great storm, a great storm of wind. Look at these next two words. I want you to see it. It means the word storm, and actually the word wind, I didn't highlight it there, but it, there's two words there. The first one is a storm which means a furious, violent attack of wind. It's like this, it was like hurricane wind, a storm. And the, the wind, it means it was violent, it was agitating, right? A stream of air, strong and temptuous. That means it just keeps coming and coming. So out of the blue, out of the blue, there arose this incredible storm of wind, rain. Go back to the scripture, my dear friend. How many love the word? Because there arose a great storm there, out of the blue. It was like a full, full, full throttle attack. The waves beat into the ship so that it's now full. Look at that scripture in the Amplified Version. I want you to see it. How many love the word? Amen. He said, and a furious storm of wind of hurricane proportions arose. And the waves kept beating into the boat so that it was already becoming full. This is pretty bad. Would you all agree on this? This is pretty terrible. I mean, the boat's getting, you know, where, where are they? They're in the center of God's will. They're right where God wants them to be. Yeah. Didn't Jesus direct them there? Yeah. Didn't Jesus direct them there? Yeah. Do you guys remember the story when it says, Jesus being led of the Spirit was led into the wilderness where he fasted and where he was tempted of the devil. Is it possible there are times that we get, God leads us for a purpose right in the middle of something? Not for us to die, but for us to win. Yep. Yes. God didn't bring the storm, but in an interesting way, he knew what was coming. Right. You know, the word says there's no temptation taking you, but such as is common with man. But with that temptation, God is faithful to, to give you a way of escape, right? That you can bear it and get out of it. We don't avoid these things. These things are opportunities for us to trust God. I'm in the center of God's will. God's telling me to be here. And all of a sudden, there's this wicked, horrible storm. He said, a furious storm of wind, hurricane. Everybody say hurricane. hurricane. Now, you guys have seen hurricane winds, right? Yeah. The wind blowing. And they, they, these are little boats. Kept beating into the boat. And it was full. Now, look at verse number 38. And he, Jesus, what was Jesus doing? How many like that? He was in the hinder part, back part of the ship. He was fretting. He was worried. He was biting his nails. <laughs> what was Jesus doing? 
No, no, not on our alert. And he was in the back of the ship. He was asleep. He was asleep on a pillow. Now, the good thing about this, and I want you to see it, that that same peace that he has is in you and me. Yes. Some people say, I don't believe it. That's Jesus. Well, Jesus, as he is, so are we in this world by the grace of God. Amen. And the very peace of that peace is in us. Amen. Can you imagine that? He is in the boat. The wind is blowing. The boat is crossing and turning. Water's there, and he is sleeping, sleeping. <laughs> is it possible that you and I can be so restful in the perfect will of God that we can sleep. Yes. Yes. Amen. Let me ask you something. What if Jesus didn't wake up? Do you still think that they would have got to the other side? Yes. yes. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. They could have just said, I don't know what's going on here, but, you know, yeah, we're going to get over there. Everybody get your pillow out. Let's follow the master. <laughs> Isn't that what disciples should do? <laughs> Right? He is asleep on a pillow. Hopefully it was, I'm sure it wasn't, uh, it was soggy and whatever. And so what did they do? And, and they, all of them, and it's interesting, this was, just wasn't Peter waking him up. It was they, everybody say they, they, awake him and say to the Lord, they say, Lord, look at this next phrase. It said, don't you care that we, including Jesus, Perish. He said, Lord, don't you care? Look at the word for care. I want you to see it. Slide number seven. He said, Lord, don't you care? Doesn't to be of interest, to concern, the care of forethought. You know, the more peaceful that you and I are, the less we have forethought about things. You don't have to go analyzing your brain and thinking everything over. Now, now we should plan. Don't get me wrong. And it, there, there's a good part to that, right? But there's a difference between planning and peace and then just resting and giving it to the Lord and resting. But then there's another part where you're just, you know, it's everything the concern. And your whole life, you're, you're buzzing. You're nervous. It, everything's an interest to you. And the more you begin to walk with God, the less interested you are in others' problems. That doesn't mean you want to help them. You, you want to help them, right? But you're not overly concerned. You're not going to lose sleep. You're going to get more like Jesus at the wedding, you know, when his mother comes up to him and says, hey, you know, they ran out of wine. And he says, what's that got to do with me? <laughs> how many know that's how we should be responding? Not everybody's, not every problem, but every problem is my problem. And in the, the, the thing, when you're walking with the Lord and you're doing God, you, your mind's not going to be going, ah, 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 ah. And you don't realize how effective or how, what an effect that has on you. Right. Has, has effect on your, your, your emotions, your, your uh, psyche, your body, your blood pressure, your heart. Yep. There are people that are, they can't even rest at all. They're just buzzing all the time, just thinking about la, 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 la. Yep. The more you walk with God and that peace is in us, we can be like that in the midst of the storm. Yep. They came to Jesus and said, Lord, go back to the scripture. Lord, don't you care? Obviously not. <laughs> don't you care that we perish? Yeah. Look at that scripture in the Message Bible. How many love the word? Amen. But we're going to get to a real important principle. He, he was in the, uh, and Jesus was in the stern, head on a pillow, sleeping. They roused him saying, teacher, is it nothing? To you, that we're going down. <laughs> how many like that? How many, how many, that's the God that we serve. And I know, I guess that the problem that sometimes we have, when we read the Bible, we, we got Jesus is here, and then we go, well, he's God. Now, when Jesus was on the earth, he was operating and functioning as a man. Right? And so we try to go, but that's Jesus. We can't be like Jesus. Well, Throughout the scriptures, he keeps telling us that we're supposed to be like him. Right. And so if you look at that, you might think there's just absolutely no way. You know, when, they, when you think about Jesus, when he laid hands on the sick, when he cast out devils, we go, whoa, that's Jesus. No, no, no. no. He gave us the authority. Right. He gave us the power. He said, go heal the sick. Yes. 
He didn't say even pray for the sick. Go heal them. He didn't say go talk to devils. He said cast them out. Right. Negotiate with them. Go in Jesus' name. Out. Are you guys hearing me? He said, teacher, is it nothing to you that we're going down? Look at verse number 39. How many love the word, guys? And Jesus, what did Jesus do? He what? He arose. And what else did he do? He rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, peace be still. And the wind what? Ceased. And what else did it do? And there was a great guy. Now let's look at some of these words here. It says, and Jesus arose and rebuked. I want you to look at these two words together. I want you to see it. Slide number eight. How many love the word? Because when you're, this is, we're talking about living in God's peace. There are times that you and I, there's elements here, and it's the enemy that's trying to stir things up. And you and I need to exercise our authority. This was a lesson for the disciples. And we're going to see they could have done what Jesus did. And we're going to see that in a moment. But, but the, the thing is, sometimes when all this is going on, a lot of times we're just we're acting like the disciples. Lord, do something. Lord, do something. Lord, Lord, don't you care? Don't you care? What did Jesus do? And this is what he wants us to do. He arose. Stir up. How many of you know you got to stir up yourself? Yeah. Somebody said, well, I don't feel like it. I'm sure Jesus didn't feel like doing a lot of things. But you stir up yourself. How many stirred up yourself to come to church and eat that chicken salad sandwich tonight? Stir it up. Stir up. <laughs> it's like Samson. Remember that? When the Philistines be upon you. And, the, he's, and he shook himself. He stirred himself. What that word shook in the Hebrew means it was like a lion shaking his mane. Wow. And then that, you know, then finally he, he, he didn't. And the thing was, he goes, and then he goes on to say, how be it? He did not know that the Spirit of the Lord departed from him. But, but there was other times he was stirring up, but after he cut his hair, he didn't feel nothing. It was, that was showing to me a principle. He, sometimes you don't feel anything, but you stir up yourself. Yeah. And it's, not, it's not a physical thing. It's a spiritual thing. Right. Anybody that's done anything for the kingdom, preaching, singing, ministering, there's going to be times you're like, I don't feel like nothing. Yeah. Yeah. What would you do? Well, don't do nothing. No, you stir up the gift of God. Yeah. The gift is there. Stir it up, up, up. What did Jesus do? He stirred up. Roar! I'm ready. And he, ex he rebuked. That means express severe disapproval or forbid. He said, right? Now look at the verse again. I want you to see it. He arose, stirred up himself. He rebuked. He, Jesus spoke to the wind. Jesus spoke to the sea. Is it possible that you and I, some of, the, some of the things that are trying to rob our peace, cause disruption in our life, we have to exercise our authority? Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm just waiting for somebody else to do it. No, you and I, we're going to see in a moment, they could have done this. Yes. Sometimes there's turbulence and things that are happening there. And you and I need to stir up ourselves and rebuke the wind and the, the sea and say what? Peace. Everybody say peace. Peace. Everybody say, peace. peace. Be, still. Be still. Notice the word for peace. I want you to see it. He, he said two different things there. Slide, slide number nine. He said, peace. Silence. That is hush. Mute. That is involuntary stillness or basically the inability to speak. Are there sometimes noises in our life that we're just trying to deal with the the, uh, the natural side, but there's a spiritual side behind it, and we need to take authority over it. Amen. And say, peace, shut up, hush, mute. He said, peace, and what? What's the next thing he told him to do? Be still. Look at the word for be still, guys. You guys are getting it tonight. Amen. The word be still, there's the Greek word, it means to close the mouth with a muzzle to be kept in check. What is the word? A muzzle, right, is a guard typically made of straps of wire fitted over this part of an animal's face to stop it from biting or feeding. So what was Jesus telling the wind and the wave to do? He's telling it to shut up, muzzle up. How many like that? 
How many got some things you need to shut up and muzzle up? Yes. That's right. It's not flesh and blood either. Are you guys hearing this? Look at that. Look at that scripture. I want you to see it uh, uh, in the Amplified, my dear friend. Wait, time out. Jimmy, before we do that, I'm sorry. I don't want to cheat anybody. Go back to the King James. <laughs> he arose. What did he do? He rebuked. He stirred up himself, rebuked the wind, said to the sea, peace, be still. And, 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 and the wind ceased. And, and notice these next two words. And there was what? Okay. So notice this. Very interesting. So very, very interesting. Because we're going to see this word here. It's a very similar to the word. When it said arose, there arose a, uh, a storm. This is the variation of that word. The other one had a little different, right? Um, it, had a different, it was a different nuance to it. It ended with M-A-I. This one ends with H-E-E. -E. But it's, it's, it, it, the root is pretty much the same. So when he said there, he, he spoke it. He spoke it. He said, peace, be still. That means to come and do it again. To generate, to begin being. It means to arise. So, so here's the storm was going like this. And all of a sudden when Jesus spoke, peace, be still. At that very moment, guess what? What started to happen? There arose a stillness. Look at the word for uh, uh, calmness there, slide number 12. It means tranquility, peacefulness, right? The state or quality of being free from agitation, a strong, there's a freedom. There's something powerful happened there. So get the picture. The enemy's starting to work. He's going. There arose a storm, right? Now Jesus speaks. He exercises his authority, says peace. He says, shut up. He said, muzzle up. And as soon as he said it and he spoke it out, at that moment, it began to be. And so all of a sudden, instead of that storm raging, the peace of God that passes all understanding, that's so powerful, all of a sudden it began to create this wonderful stillness, this wonderful peacefulness, this wonderful tranquility, as we're seeing right there. It was relieving all the agitation. Are you guys getting this? Amen. But, but see, if Jesus didn't speak it, if Jesus didn't say it, if Jesus didn't declare it, th that turmoil would have just kept going. But when he spoke it, and he spoke it in faith, exercised his authority, all of a sudden the peace of God, everybody say the peace of God, peace of God. started taking over. Now look at that in the Amplified. How many love the word? Amen. So we're talking about principles for peace. One, we said, hey, put God first. Number two, believe the word. Number three, exercise some authority. There's some more we'll talk about, uh, hopefully next week. Notice what he says. He arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Hush now. Be still. Muzzled. And the wind ceased, sank to rest, as it, if exhausted by its beating. And there was immediately a great calm, a perfect peacefulness. Look at that scripture. I want you to see it in the Message Bible. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, awake now. He told the wind to pipe down. He said to the sea, quiet, settle down. The wind ran out of breath. The sea became smooth as glass. Oh, yeah. so, now, this isn't yelling at people. We're not wrestling against flesh and blood. This is behind the sea, right? Are you getting this picture, guys? Some people say, well, I'm going to say that to my wife. Well, you might, she might not muzzle up on you. <laughs> You're going to say that to Pastor... <laughs> right? But there's, but there's the Spirit. There's things behind there. There's, so there's something powerful you guys can do and I can do. When you and I proclaim, we speak it, right? Go back to the script. He said, go back to the King James. How many love the word? Amen. Hallelujah. He arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. Now let's continue reading. Verse number 40. And he said unto them, I'm so glad you guys woke me up. <laughs> because if you didn't wake me up, we would have all been in a real pickle here, right? We would all drown because I am the absolute only one that could exercise this authority. No. He said, he said unto them, why are you so fearful? Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith. Look at the next verse. And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, what manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Now let me ask you a question. If Jesus rebuked the disciples and said, why are you so fearful? 
They should have said, well, Lord, there was absolutely nothing we could do. It's only you could do it. Then they would have a right to say, Lord, you're not being fair. You did not give us the tools. You did not give us the, the authority. But, but it wasn't the case. The Lord was basically sleeping there, and he was probably hoping that they would have took authority over that. They were around him enough. They saw him speak the trees, mountain, tell him what to do. He was hoping that they would just have exercised what they've learned. For him to rebuke them and to chide them like children for something that they didn't have the power to do it, it would be unjust of God yes. to chide them and say, you're wrong. You, how, how is it you guys got no faith? It would be wrong. The point of the matter is, they did. You and I do. We can. Yes. You can. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. I've given you authority and power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, right? And nothing by any means shall harm you. Right. You have the authority. You have the yep. power. Are there times that you and I have to exercise our peace yes. and, and say, in the name of Jesus, yes. Thank you, Lord. peace be still. Silence. Stop. In Jesus' name. You're like, well, I can't do that. Well, you can do that. Amen. You can do that. Sometimes we're trying to get Jesus to do what he's given us the power to do. Given us the, the right to do. I challenge you. I encourage you. I say, you should just like, by the grace of God, if there's, you start speaking. If there's your job situations all like this, just say, Father, and, go, and speak over it. In the name of Jesus, I speak peace over the atmosphere of this place in Jesus' name. If it's your home, speak peace. In the name of Jesus, I speak peace in this home. I say, peace, be still. Shut up and muzzle up in Jesus' name. Can you see that? Yes. Hallelujah. Stand with me to your feet. You guys are awesome. Amen. Hallelujah. How many got something today? Amen. How many are excited you got authority and power? Amen. How many are glad that we have the peace of God, right? It passes all understanding. It guards our heart and our mind. Hallelujah. How many are glad we got the authority, right? Yes. Everybody say, I got the authority. I got the authority. See, the Bible says that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. How many are excited about that? Yes. Just lift your hearts, lift your hands to the Lord. Just this worship. And Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your peace. Thank you for the peace that passes all understanding. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we worship you. Just worship him. Just thank him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God, that you got other sides for us. You got things that you want us to do. And Father, we say yes, Lord. And we thank you that whatever you told us to do, we're going to get there. No matter what the enemy tries to say, whatever he tries to do, Father, we thank you that you've given us the authority. You've given us yes. the power. We can speak to the storm. We can speak to the wind. Yes. We can speak yes. to the waves. Because you said, Lord, not me. You said, verily, verily, I send to you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things yes. which he saith yes. shall come to pass. He shall, she shall have whatsoever she saith. Yes. Lord, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, some of you, as I was sharing that, you're like, well, there are some areas right there. You just right now, just begin to say peace. So tell that thing to shut up and muzzle up. Shut up. You spirit of fear. You lying spirit. You, you, you distracting spirit. You spirit of anxiety. Right now, I command you, shut up and muzzle up in Jesus' name. And Lord, I just thank you for the very peace of God that passes all understanding. The very peace that Jesus, you gave to us. You said, my peace I give. Lord, we got your peace in our heart. Yes. Thank, you. thank you, Lord. Thank you. Just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I have the peace of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I walk in peace. I live in peace. I move in peace. Peace is the umpire deciding for me. Thank you, peace. The peace of God. Oh, thank you, Lord. And Lord, we thank you that your name, you said your name shall be called the Prince of Peace. Yes. Thank you, Lord, that we have the Prince of Peace, Lord. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 We love you guys.
God bless you. A little dry without the music, but we... <laughs> Hallelujah.